All right, all right, all right. So this is part two of, you know, seven um, psychological tricks that you can use to build an unstoppable confidence as a property investor. So we've spoken about, if we're just doing a recap, we've spoken about, you know, stop competing yourself with other people. We've spoken about finding your tribe. We've spoken about owning your strengths. And we've spoken about, you know, how to deal with your limiting beliefs. So all those things, if you have not watched part one, if you go into it, you can find all the details I just mentioned in this video. And that's what I think you can watch this one without watching the first video. Uh, is very useful and very, very interconnected because you are somebody right now who's an investor or who wants to be an investor or who's an existing investor uh, trying to expand their portfolio, but your confidence doesn't allow you to get too much out of your comfort zone. Your confidence doesn't allow you to get on the phone and ask for money. Your confidence doesn't allow you to, to find, get on the phone, get rejected by uh, sellers, investors, and other people. Your confidence doesn't allow you to your lack of confidence, I should say, it doesn't allow you to go out there and ask for things that you're looking for. Ask for the deal that you want, ask for the price that you want to pay, and ask for what you think you can get. And that is a problem, confidence problem. is usually most of the time you realize that confidence is actually a mindset issue. And your mindset issue based on different beliefs, you know, and we can't stop your beliefs, you can't change your beliefs, you're going to have to change them yourself. And that's where transformation comes from, which is a story for another day. I'm going to discuss transformation. If you haven't seen my previous video that I did, I think it was about why people quit online courses and never get results. I also touched on a bit on information does not mean transformation. However, transformation comes from conversion. Conversion comes from your beliefs, you, you watching this right now, working on your personal beliefs about money, uh, about, you know, uh, building relationships uh, with people in the industry, in the business, about, you know, your environment holding you back, about, you know, um, your abilities and et cetera. You know, so that is all where it comes from. So in this video, I'm just going to continue with like, I think it's three more. I think I did four on the previous video, or if not five, and then I'm going to finish with the three more. So let's start with this one. So right now, if you want to build unstoppable confidence, you must focus on what you can control. You know, uh, change what you can in a short way. You are somebody right now who's uh, maybe knowing that you don't have maybe money, Maybe you don't have a um, network. Maybe you don't have um, a property. You don't have any savings, wealth, etc. cetera, that you, you, you need to come back. You need to trickle down to say, okay, this is my situation, whatever it is. I don't have money to expand. I don't have uh, knowledge to expand into development. I don't have knowledge to buy blocks of flats. Or maybe I don't have the capital to do that as well. All right, so what can you control? That's you. Uh, you should know that. That's something you should know. That's something you should sit down and figure out and not to focus too much on what you can control. Focus on what can you control. Maybe you can get a call on a call with me and tell me about your real estate problem. Maybe you can find another mentor online or anywhere else and get them to, to help you on your journey. Maybe you can invest on an online course or training and learn a specific skill so you can be able to expand your business. Maybe you can um, you know, speak to uh, other alternative fin financing companies, you know, that can help you expand your portfolio, etc. There's a lot of ways you can work around what you can control. And then um, if you don't have the money, maybe partner up with somebody who has the money and, and invest in a training or course, you know, maybe figure out a way, become resourceful in short. So what can you control today um, is going to be, you know, what is going to boost your confidence because if you can be able to focus on that and be able to achieve that some of us um we get confidence from being able to achieve small tasks that you promised yourself basically you get confidence by being a man uh, sorry being a man of your word to yourself if you say i'm going to do this and you do it um and then you become you trust yourself more basically in a nutshell you got to trust yourself more and you get you know okay i can do this if i say i'm going to do it 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 and that's how your confidence build up. And it starts with small things like that and make you make being able to make a decision. That's why you must not uh, overlook them and you must not um, not celebrate them, but you must not over celebrate and get stuck at one place. So that's one thing as well. I'm saying focus on what you can control. The second part is be fully. The second point, sorry, is be fully committed to self-improvement. There is no way you're going to be confident if you don't improve. 
There is no way you're going to be confident if you're not going to improve and change your perspective. Here's what self-improvement is about. Self-improvement is not about uh, buying 100 books, going to, to seminars, etc. That's part of it. But the whole idea there is you to now look at life with different lenses. I'm just going to give you an example, right? How many of you guys watching this video uh, have been in a situation where you guys are maybe losing out on a deal, uh, a relationship, or uh, anything in life because of lack of knowledge? You lost on an opportunity. I'm not saying you must regret losing, but you lost on an opportunity because you do not have not enough knowledge that can help you guide you through that or do not have somebody who can guide you through that. I did that with my first business. I built a business, it went up, and then I started having trouble with supplies, um, you know, too many orders, and I could not afford to reproduce what I did before because material cost was high in SA, uh, the labor was a problem, the turnaround time of the orders, it was becoming chaotic. And also the limitation of designs, a lot of things, you know, and I did not have somebody I can talk to, I did not have my tribe, I did not have a community, and I also did not have, you know, somebody who can help me out with that. And But that was not their fault. That is just my fault because I had lack of knowledge. I could have fun, f figured out who is doing what, gave them a call, um, asked to show them my little brand, and I could have just, maybe it could have taken another, another different turn because they could have seen, oh, this guy's creative, he's driven, whatever, let's support him. Uh, or not, who knows? Maybe they could have pointed me in the right direction. They didn't have to be part of my business or anything like that. But in short, it's just one of my instances where I had to learn that lack of information and lack of investing in myself costed me a good opportunity that I've already started as well. So here's your opportunity as well to think about that, to say, what are the things that you're missing out right now because you do not lack the information, you do not lack information also. There's information at heart information in head and information at hand. So those are three types of information you have or the types of knowledge is knowledge of heart, knowledge in the head and knowledge at hand. Knowledge at heart is what you know already. In the head is what you know and you can find out by reading. And at hand is who you can get access to. So who can you get access to can help you with um, what you need to solve. And I think that is something that's very important. If you do not know who, or you don't have those people around you, then start building those people around you. Start finding your tribe, stop getting involved and stop comparing yourself and start building what you can build and also focus on what you can control. So this is coming back to my um, point of saying, be fully committed to self-improvement. That's the only way you're going to be confident. That's the only way you're going to ask for things that you think you can get. That's the only way you won't take rejection personal. That's the only way you're going to keep going in any endeavor you want to do in your life in your business life, in your personal life, in anything else you want to do in life, the only way to go is focusing on self-improvement and being fully committed. Don't take shortcuts. Don't... You look, there are a lot of you going to watch these videos and think, this is it for me. I've figured it out or something like that. And I don't have a problem with people like that. What I'm having a problem is people who are not fully committed. You know, when it gets tough, they quit. And I think I've spoken about that with that online courses video. Uh, that does not only apply to online courses, it applies in anything you start in life and you do not finish because of specific things. So go watch that video and tell me what you guys think. This is how I'm going to end this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Otherwise, uh, let me know which one of these tricks you know attached to the most, which one of these tricks was your biggest takeaway, and how and what steps you're going to be taking to build your personal ultimate confidence as a property investor going forward. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.